Tonight on Y News. The Department of Health declares leptospirosis outbreak in 18 villages in Metro Manila. The Department of Trade and Industry issues new set of suggested retail price as prices of basic goods continue to rise. Y News begins now. From the UNTV News and Rescue Command Center in Quezon City, this is Y News. Good evening. The Department of Health formally declares an outbreak of leptospirosis in 18 villages in Metro Manila. The agency also advises public, especially those who recently waded in floodwaters, to immediately seek medical treatment when they have flu-like symptoms. Let's find out why from Aiko Miguel. Health Secretary Francisco Duque III declares today a leptospirosis outbreak in certain parts of the national capital region following the increase in its cases in the last two weeks. Data from the Department of Health show that the outbreak covers 18 villages in several areas including Quezon City, Taguig, Paranaque, Pasig, Navotas, Mandaluyong, and Malabon. From June 10 to July 3, the DOH has recorded 105 cases in the said areas, bringing the total number to 368 from January 1 to July 3 this year, with 52 deaths. This is 38% higher than the average number of cases reported over the last five years. DOH explains an outbreak may be declared when the number of cases breach the epidemic threshold. Epidemic threshold uh, means that the average incidents uh, or cases, number of cases over the last five years has been exceeded by the number of cases that we have reported. The agency, however, clarifies that this did not mean that the disease was contracted in these barangays, citing wide areas of flooding. Leptospirosis is a disease caused by bacteria found in the urine of infected animals. It can enter through an open wound, eyes, mouth, and nose. Its symptoms include high fever, headache, chills, vomiting, abdominal pain, skin and urine discoloration, and red eyes. Pwede siya sa dogs. Okay, pwede rin siya sa farm, sa mga cattle. Kung nag-aalaga ka ng baboy, pwede rin sa baboy makuha mo ang lepto. Infected na animal at umihi at binungkal mo yung lupa, pwede yung aerosol noon na may, may infection, pwede, mo ma, ano, pwede ka magkasakit ng lepto. Individuals with leptospirosis may also exhibit flu-like symptoms. As a precaution, the agency is advising the public to immediately seek medical treatment, especially those who recently waded in flood waters. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Trade and Industry issues a new set of suggested retail prices as June inflation drives higher basic commodity prices. Monoxon tells us why. Trade and industry personnel observed increases in the prices of several basic commodities when they made rounds in some stores in Quezon City earlier. Prices of canned goods like sardines, corned beef, and meatloaf rose by 50 centavos up to 150, evaporated milk by 1 peso to 150, and even detergent soap increased by 50 centavos. DTI says this is due to the increase in the value of raw materials used in making the said products as well as the recent shortage in the supply of rice and sugar. The agency also associates the surge in prices to the 5.2% inflation in June. Yung sabay-sabay na pagtaas ng consumer products na makikita mo sa market nagkaroon ng effect sa inflation. But this a new set of suggested retail price has been issued by the DTI to guide the consumers. But Laban Consumer Group point to the tax reform for acceleration and inclusion or trade law as the main culprit of all the ballooning market prices that further burden millions of Filipinos. Senators also have been insisting to review the trade law implementation because of the surging prices of goods. Water and electricity rates are also set to increase this month while another hike in fuel prices looms next week. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Some lawmakers believe it is high time to revisit the implementation of the tax reform law. 
Senator Panfilo Lacson says the government should take action to curtail rising commodity prices, citing the 5.2% inflation in June. While Senator Bamakino in a statement said he is hoping for an announcement of the suspension of fuel excise tax hike under the tax reform law during President Rodrigo Duterte's State of the Nation address on July 23rd. Dapat pag-aralan, dapat i-revisit yung frame. Uh, sa akin, ang nakita kung pinakamalaking culprit talaga yung sa isa sa And un unwarranted restlessness is spreading among the state weather bureau workforce following the issuance of notice of disallowance by the Commission on Audit. Ray Pelayo tells us why. Weatherman and other staff of the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or Pagasa are lamenting the decision of the Commission on Audit to issue a notice of disallowance requiring them to refund the longevity pay they received in 2015 amounting to 1.7 million pesos. This is due to the alleged overpayment of the longevity pay under the law known as Magna Carta for scientists, engineers, researchers, and other science and technology personnel in the government. According to Philippine Weatherman Employees Association President Ramon Agustin, the longevity pay received by the employees is legal and regular as they have been receiving it in the past 15 years. He adds it has greatly helped prevent scientists from leaving the agency. Dahil sa ganitong disallowance ay medyo nagdadalawang isip na naman po ang ating mga season forecasters na lumisa na naman ang pag-asa. Agustin notes, COA's notice of disallowance has caused unnecessary restlessness among the pag employees since they would be obliged to return it if their appeal will not be granted. Also, some of those who received longevity pay have already retired. This is an aging agency. 80% of those ay siguradong magsosola if ever na tuluyang mapilitang kaming isole ang nasabing overpayment. Weather Technician 1 Reynaldo Acudili, who have been working for the Department of Science and Technology for 38 years, is among those affected by the COAS notice. May nag-aaral ako anak tatlo. Eh, kagaya niyan, nagdenet na lang kami ng 5,000 a month. Tapos, tatanggalin pa yung laundry. Kaya, laking bagay yung mahihirap talaga sa amin. The group also fears that COA will likewise issue a notice of disallowance for their longevity pay in 2016 and 2017. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A vertigo-inducing glass bridge suspended over a valley in Queen Yuan City in Guangdong, China, opens on Thursday to tourist shrieks of both excitement and fear. The 202-meter-long structure features a massive circular glass observation deck with a diameter of 16.8 meters suspended at the end of the bridge. The bridge juts out 72 meters from the cliff's edge affording spectacular views of the ground below. The world's biggest and highest glass construction, the Glass Skywalk, allows 99.15% of sunlight to pass through, so tourists can fully enjoy the stunning views of the sheer cliffs and 131-meter-high freefall waterfall below. According to authorities, each piece of glass weighs 4.5 tons and can hold two vehicles at the same time. Up next on Wine News. The Philippine National Police floats the possibility that the gunman in Mayor Halili's killing might not be a sniper following a reenactment of assassination. NPNP CIDG cracks down on syndicate offering faster passport processing in Pasay. Wine News will be right back. Welcome back to Y News and here are the headlines. The Land Transportation Office begins distributing new vehicle license plates nationwide. The family of Tanawan City Mayor Antonio Halili suspects government involvement in the killing of their patriarch according to Senator Panfilo Lacson. 
And the government's door remains open on the resumption of peace talks with the communist rebels. The Land Transportation Office releases today the long-delayed car plates. However, the, the agency clarifies only car owners that registered in July 2016 can claim plates for now. Let's find out why from Joanna Nano. Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade and LTO Chief Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante head the ceremonial car plate distribution at the LTO Central Office in East Avenue, Quezon City today. The agency was able to complete 200,000 licensed plates through the newly opened plate-making facility, but the LTO says the plates will not be issued in bulk. LTO adds they have already prepared the plates for cars that registered in July 2016 to December 2016, but they will only distribute plates for July registrants for now. A schedule will be followed to ensure an organized distribution. Claimants may go to authorized LTO district offices or their car dealers. Buhay ang katotohanan na magbuhat sa araw na to, mag-uumpisin akong ma-issue at ma-release yung mga plaka. Meanwhile, plates for vehicles registered from 2013 to June 2016 remain on hold because these are under the previous contract questioned by the Commission on Audit. The LTO says they will have to wait for a COAS resolution before they can process the distribution of more than 3 million backlogs. May napipintong resolution ito. At as soon as the COA disallowance is resolved, makakapag-proceed na kami on how to treat the previous uh, contract. Issuance of motorcycle plates is also on hold while the agency waits for the ratification of the proposed law on the sizes of motorcycle plates. The LTO will announce the next schedule of plate distribution for vehicles registered in August 2016. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board will roll out this month a nationwide taxi mobile app usage and recalibration of public taxis. Here's why from Victor Cosare. In a bid to improve taxi service, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board is set to launch in the third week of this month a mobile application on the usage and recalibration of public taxis. LTFRB Board Member Attorney Eileen Lizada says cab drivers would have to utilize this app to offer passengers the option to hail a cab in just the tip of their fingers, just like the system being used by the Transport Network Vehicle Service Providers. Lizada met with the taxi operators and mobile app owners this morning. As we recalibrate the taxis, kailangan na hong meron na silang taxi app. So wala na ho yung mga tanong ng mga taxi driver na saan ho ang daan natin. The official adds this app also offers convenience to passengers as they will be able to call a cab despite bad weather. Hindi ka na kailangan lumabas ng bahay mo para pumara ng taxi. Kung umuulan, doon ka lang sa bahay mo. Cab drivers using the app will also get higher income as this system will include higher new fare structure, 40 pesos flag down rate with additional 13 pesos and 50 centavos per kilometer and 2 peso per minute for the running time. While traditional metered fare will apply for taxis not using the mobile app. Higher fare meaning uh, bigger take home pay for the taxi drivers. We want that para yung taxi drivers will stay with the taxi companies. Taxi operators can also monitor their units via its global positioning system or GPS feature and will also show the passengers peak period. We're working exclusively sa mga taxis lang. We're actually giving them also uh, fleet management para they can monitor their fleets kung saan na ano yung performance. So all of the technologies na kailangan. Some of the operators, meanwhile, are already using a different mobile app for taxis. We have the MyCab, MyCab uh, hailing app now, right now. We install in our every taxi. So almost kami na sa 80% na. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The Transportation Department confirms that the audit on the 48 Dalian trains bought from China has already been completed. However, it is yet to assess if it may be used to service the MRT3 passengers. John Anno tells us why. 
Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugada reveals on Wednesday that the independent audit conducted on 48 dalian trains procured from China to augment the Metrorail Transit 3 fleet has been completed. Tugada says the dalian trains did not entirely fail the assessment, but they would still have to address some technical aspects. On an overall basis, does it mean they failed? No, it only means may kakulangan. Tugade adds they will meet with the locomotive and rolling stock company, the firm that made the trains on August 20, to discuss and finalize the agreement on the assessment and usage of the new trains. And once the process is complete, they might allow these coaches to service the thousands of MRT passengers before the year ends. Basta ho magtulong-tulong lahat. Pwede hong pakinabangan. At gusto ho natin magkatulong-tulong ang lahat upang the platform of performance and compliance will be on a win-win. DOTR started the independent audit on 48 Dalian trains in January 2018 after reports of it being overweight and incompatible with MRT rail surface. Meanwhile, Japanese company Sumitomo is expected to begin its duties as MRT3 maintenance provider in the following months. A loan agreement is also set to be inked this July on Sumitomo's taking over of MRT maintenance and rehabilitation works. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Police investigators say there is a possibility that the gunman in Tanawan Mayor Antonio Halili's killing may not be a sniper as initially reported, following a reenactment conducted earlier. Charlie Barredo tells us why. It was exactly 8.10 a.m. when Tanawan City Mayor Antonio Halili was shot dead in the early Monday flag ceremony at the Tanawan City Hall grounds. The Special Investigation Task Group Halili conducted on Thursday the reenactment of the assassination to eliminate speculations and establish the position of the gunman. In the reenactment, a mannequin wearing a suit was placed at the spot where Mayor Halili was standing along with other individuals during the incident. After the reenactment, Region 4A Director Edward Caranza confirms that the position of the gunman was the sniper hole which they mentioned before. What we're trying to establish here is the position of the gunman. I think that is the best advantage position considering the exfiltration of the gunman from the position of City Hall. The crime laboratory reports that the killer had an estimated distance of 76.8 meters from the position of the mayor. The suspect was also elevated 4.1 meters from the ground which enabled him to hit the official despite any movement in his place. Caranza said it is possible that the gunman is not a sniper who commonly aims for a headshot. With that distance of 76.8 meters, an ordinary marksman, as I've stated earlier, a person who is knowledgeable and in the use of his long firearms can execute such act. At a distance of 76.8 meters, he says that a person highly skilled in firearms can also execute a kill shot comparable to a marksman's. Currently, there are still three persons of interest under police investigation. Investigators initially said they are probing three possible angles in the killing, but PNP Chief Oscar Arbayalde says they might also look into the possibility of revenge following information on Halili's previous dispute with a retired general. Uh, nila tinitingnan nila that one motive yung away no yung away nila and of course hindi natin ma matanggi na yung alleged involvement sa uh, illegal drugs and of course yung political side of it yun nga yung away doon sa ano uh, na alleged na high ranking official hindi ko alam kung uh, pulis yun no ano eh, kasi hindi ko kilala Yung, uh, I cannot say if he's a policeman or uh, a member of the armed forces of the Philippines. The crime lab will also conduct a ballistic examination on the bullet shell found in the sniper hole at past 9 this morning to cross-match with the 5.56mm slug found in the body of the mayor in an autopsy. Through this, it is possible to identify the owner of the firearm, which was used in the killing of Halili. Charlie Barreto, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The family of slain Tanawan Mayor Antonio Halili suspects that the government may be behind the fatal shooting. Let's find out why from Nel Maribuho. Keen of the late Tanawan City Mayor Antonio Halili believes the government had a hand in the murder of their patriarch. According to Senator Panfilo Lacson, the Alilis confided their suspicion to him when he met them yesterday. Lacson had known the slain mayor since he was a junior police officer. The lawmaker also believes that the crime was well organized based on the manner that Halili was assassinated. 
he vowed to make his own inquiry on the case. Ito yung hamon talagang malaki sa gobyerno. Kaya isolve nila to disabuse the, uh, yung pag-iisip lalo na ng pamilya na may kinalaman yung gobyerno. The former chief of the National Police also discloses the observation made by the Halili family on the apparent surveillance weeks before the assassination. Instinct ko yun as a, as a former operative, as a former investigator, gawain namin nung araw yun eh. Pag may hinahabol kaming kriminal, nagpapalit kami ng plaka. Lakson adds the PNP should accept this case as a challenge, especially with the growing speculations. The lawmaker also believes that the list of those allegedly involved in narcotics trade should not be made public as this may threaten the lives of the listed personalities. It can be noted that Mayor Halili made it to the narco list of President Duterte. Tinatelegraph mo yung, yung intelligence information ng gobyerno doon sa mga kinaakulan. Pangatlo, baka mapatay dahil uh, gamiting target of opportunity ng mga kalaban eh total nasa narkulis eh Lakson also urges the PNP to revisit its anti-drug campaign and consider stricter firearms control strategies Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue Senate of the Philippines The Union of Local Authorities of the Philippines met with Interior Secretary Eduardo Año and Philippine National Police Chief Oscar Albayalde on Wednesday to air their concerns over the consecutive murders of Antonio Halili and Ferdinand Bote. Presidential Spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque says the local executives appeal to authorities to provide protection to mayors and other local officials in Mindanao who were banned from carrying firearms under the existing martial law. The local officials also ask for their participation in the vetting of names to be included in the narco list. Kasi sila naman alam din nila kung sino talaga yung mga involved sa kanilang mga lugar to. At yan naman po ay pag-aaralan. Ang alam natin ngayon ay nagkakaroon na ng central database no at uh, PDEA will take the lead in the central database for um, narco lists or narco personalities no. The government is not closing its doors on the resumption of peace talks with the communist rebels. However, it insists that the conditions imposed by President Rodrigo Duterte remain. Bernard Dadis tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte still wants to give peace negotiations with the Communist Party of the Philippines a chance in the hopes of achieving the elusive lasting peace in the country. However, the chief executive insists the peace talks revival should be subject to his conditions. One of Duterte's conditions is to move the venue of the talks in a local area, a demand that the communist rebels has long since dismissed, saying the talks need a foreign neutral ground in compliance with the pertinent provisions in the joint agreement on safety and immunity guarantees. Duterte also wants the rebel to stop collecting revolutionary tax, to stop pushing for a coalition government, to have a ceasefire agreement in which the new People's Army are encamped in designated areas. According to Malacanang, the resumption of peace talks was discussed during the Joint Command Conference of the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines on Wednesday night. Peace talks were supposed to be revived in June 28 but it was postponed for three months to give way to consultations and assessments. Patuloy pa rin ang paghangad ng uh, kapayapaan na ating presidente, pero hindi naman po pwede na sila pa magdidikta kung paano tayo makakarating sa kapayapaan. CPP founder Jose Maria Season has earlier said in a statement that Duterte just laid out these conditions to shut down the peace talks. But according to the government, they are also willing to have localized peace talks if the Reds reject the president's conditions. Presidential spokesperson Harry Rocky also adds the Malacanang will no longer comment on the statement of season. Again, as a matter of policy, I will really not comment anymore on anything that Joma Season says because let it remain in the propaganda page of the CPP and PA. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue. Philippines. PNP Criminal Investigation and Detection Group warns the public against acquiring passports from illegal means following the arrest of two counterfeiters in Pasay. Mirasol Abogodil tells us why. 
A certain female named Anna can no longer acquire a passport after she was blacklisted by the Department of Foreign Affairs over some previous problems. But recently, she needed to go abroad to visit her ailing mother-in-law, so she resorted to scoring online pages that offer quick passport processing for a fee. Sabi po kasi nila, may assume identity daw po ako. Noong no una po kasi na biktima ako ng human trafficking, nagkaroon po ako ng passport na hindi naman po ako ang kumuha at gumawa. Yung pinaka-employer ko po, sila po ang nag-asikaso lahat nun. Anna says she was able to acquire an authentic passport after paying 210,000 pesos without handing any documents. However, she observed a page in the passport which states a different name and details. Based on the passport number, it was originally issued to a child. CIDG ATCO Chief Police Superintendent Roque Merdeguilla Jr. says they are now probing how suspects Connie Fajardo and Roel Pinlac were able to obtain an authentic passport and replace it with details of their clients. The two were arrested during an entrapment operation in Pasay City yesterday. Sa, ayun sa, sa biktima, no? ayun sa biktima na merong, merong aalalay sa kanya sa, sa terminal sa naiya kung sa ilalabas. So dahil nga nangyaring ganon, uh, actually pumayag din siya ng eskorta, no? pero yung kasama niyang pending yung application ng passport, hindi na naniwala. No? Alam niyang peke na. No? Some passport features like watermark was also noticeably absent, prompting red flags from immigration officials stationed at the airport. Kaya nagkasa tayo ng entrapment operation dahil yung isa pang aplikante ng passport ay uh, magbabaya, no? hinihinga ng pera para doon sa kabayaran sa delivery ng bagong passport na in order. Yun nga, kahapon ng hapon, nagkaroon ng abutan at bayaran. No? Inabot ng suspect yung passport ng isang biktima at kinuha yung kabayaran, no? 70,000 pesos, yung kanyang balanse. Eh. At nahuli nga natin at lumalabas na isang, meron ng sindikato, no? meron na silang grupo na for a fee ay kaya nilang nakakapagbigay ng passport. Unfortunately, itong mga passport ay fake. The suspects are now facing staffa and falsification of public document charges as well as violation of the Philippine Passport Act. Authorities say the said scheme is dangerous as this may be used in human trafficking and terrorism. The police also warned the public against acquiring passports from illegal means as they may also face charges. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. The National Bureau of Investigation Human Trafficking Division nabs a pregnant woman during an, an entrapment operation in Manila. JL Asayo tells us why. Seven months pregnant, Maharain Lopez was unable to evade arrest after operatives of the National Bureau of Investigation, Anti-Human Trafficking Division swooped in while she was inside a fast food chain in Manila. Authorities nabbed her during an entrapment operation over complaints of illegal recruitment filed by seven of her alleged victims. 27-year-old Scott, not his real name, is one of those who were allegedly promised by Lopez with a job in Japan with the help of her contact. He says he felt devastated to learn he had been defrauded because Lopez is the wife of his cousin. Scott says he began to suspect Lopez two months after she asked him to pay 78,000 pesos and to submit different requirements with no progress. He got in touch with other recruits and sought the help of the NBI. It was learned that Lopez collected almost half a million pesos from the seven victims. Masakit sa loob, syempre. Naloko kayo. Pero at the same time, parang may halong saya kasi nga napanampot ko. Lopez will face charges for violating the Migrant Workers and Overseas Filipinos Act of 1995 and Estafa. The NBI says illegal recruitment remains as the biggest problem in the country, reminding the public to be cautious of people promising them too good to be true job offers. Wag magtiwala at at unang una na dapat talaga ang transaksyon ng yayare sa isang lihiti mong opisina ng isang recruitment agency na register sa POEA at uh, dapat merong job order. JL Asayo, UNTV News and Rescue, NBI Manila. Up next on Y News. A British couple is in critical condition after exposure to a nerve agent. 
and rescuers in Thailand to search other cave entrances as they ponder extraction plan for the trap football team. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Castro III. Good evening. To complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. The Department of Health declares today a leptospirosis outbreak in certain parts of the national capital region following the increase in its cases in the last two weeks. Data from the DOH show that the outbreak covers 18 villages in several areas including Quezon City, Taguig, Paranaque, Pasig, Nabotas, Mandaluyong and Malabon. From June 10 to July 3, 105 cases had been recorded in the said areas, bringing the total number to 368 from January 1 to July 3 this year, with 52 deaths. The symptoms of leptospirosis include high fever, headache, chills, vomiting, abdominal pains, skin and urine discoloration, and red eyes. Infected individuals may also exhibit flu-like symptoms, so the public is advised to immediately seek medical treatment, especially those who recently waded in flood waters. Pwede siya sa dogs. Okay, pwede rin siya sa farm, sa mga cattle. Kung nag-aalaga ka ng baboy, pwede rin sa baboy makuha mo ang lepto. Infected na animal at umihi at binungkal mo yung lupa, Pwede yung aerosol noon na may, may infection, pwede, mo ma, ano, pwede ka magkasakit ng lepto. Meanwhile, the Department of Trade and Industry observes further increases in the prices of several basic commodities when they made rounds in some stores in Quezon City earlier. Prices of canned goods like sardines, corned beef and meatloaf, and evaporated milk rose by up to 1 peso and 50 centavos, while detergent soap increased by 50 centavos. DTI says this is due to the increase in the value of raw materials used in making the said products, as well as the recent shortage in the supply of rice and sugar. The agency also associates the surge in prices to the 5.2% inflation in June. With this, a new set of suggested retail price has been issued by the DTI to guide the consumers. Yung sabay-sabay na pagtaas ng consumer products na makikita mo sa market, nagkaroon ng effect sa inflation. The Land Transportation Office releases today the long-delayed car plates. The agency was able to complete 200,000 licensed plates through the newly opened plate-making facility. However, the plates will not be issued in bulk. The LTO also clarifies only car owners that registered in July 2016 can claim plates for now, though, they have already produced plates for registrants up to December 2016. A schedule will be followed to ensure an organized distribution and claimants may go to authorized LTO district offices or their car dealers. Meanwhile, plates for vehicles registered from 2013 to June 2016 remain on hold because these are under the previous contract question by the Commission on Audit. A resolution from COA would also have to be issued before they can process the distribution of more than 3 million backlogs. Issuance of motorcycle plates is also on hold while the agency waits for the ratification of the proposed law on the sizes of motorcycle plates. May napipintong resolution nito at as soon as the COA disallowance is resolved, makakapag-proceed na kami on how to treat the previous uh, Contract. In other news, the family of the late Tanawan City Mayor Antonio Halili believes that the government had a hand in the murder of their patriarch. According to Senator Panfilo Lacson, the Halilis confided their suspicion to him when he met them yesterday. Lacson had known the slain mayor since he was a junior police officer. The lawmaker also vows to make his own inquiry on the case, believing the crime was well organized based on the manner that Halili was assassinated. Ito yung habang talagang malaki sa gobyerno. Kaya isolve nila to disabuse the, uh, yung pag-iisip lalo na ng pamilya na may kinalaman yung gobyerno. Lakson also believes that the list of those allegedly involved in narcotics trade should, be made, should not be made public as this may threaten the lives of listed personalities.
Tinetelegraph mo yung, yung intelligence information ng gobyerno doon sa mga kinaakulan. Pangatlo, baka mapatay. Dahil uh, gamiting target of opportunity ng mga kalaban, eh total nasa narkulis eh. President Rodrigo Duterte still wants to give peace negotiations with the Communist Party of the Philippines a chance in the hopes of achieving the elusive lasting peace in the country. However, the chief executive insists the peace talks revival should be subject to his conditions. One of Duterte's conditions is to move the venue of the talks in a local area and for the rebels to stop collecting revolutionary tax, stop pushing for a coalition government, and to have a ceasefire agreement in which the New People's Army are encamped in designated areas. Peace talks were supposed to be revived in June 28, but it was postponed for three months to give way to consultations and assessment. The government is also willing to have localized peace talks if the Reds reject the president's conditions. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque also adds the Malacanang will no longer comment on any statements of CCPP founder Jose Maria Sison. Patuloy pa rin ang panghangad ng uh, kapayapaan ng ating presidente, pero hindi naman po pwede na sila pa magdidikta kung paano tayo makakarating sa kapayapaan. And as a matter of policy, I will really not comment anymore on anything that Joma Season says because let it remain in the propaganda page of the CPP and PA. And for the news abroad, here's Amiel Pascual from Zubay City, Taiwan, live. Amiel, good evening. Thank you, William. A couple are in critical condition after they were found unconscious at a house in Wichar, United Kingdom. Jovic Burmas tells us why. A man and women found unconscious in Wiltshire were poisoned by Novichok, the same nerve agent that poisoned ex-Russian spy Sergei Skripal. The couple, believed to be Charlie Rowley and Don Sturgis, are in a critical condition having been found unconscious at a house on Saturday. Police say no one else has presented with the same symptoms. The Met Police add there was nothing in their background to suggest the pair were targeted. That is a theory, but it's speculation at the moment. I don't have any intelligence or evidence that they were targeted in any way. There is nothing in their background to suggest that at all. So at this point in time, it's nothing but a theory. Metropolitan Police Assistant Commissioner Neil Basso says it could not be confirmed whether the nerve agent came from the same batch that Skripal and his daughter Yulia were exposed to. But he says the possibility was clearly a line of inquiry. I must say that we are not in a position to say whether the nerve agent was from the same batch that the scribbles were exposed to. Basu says no contaminated items had yet been found, but officers are putting together a very detailed examination of the couple's movements in order to determine where they were poisoned. He adds that members of the public should not pick anything up if they don't know what it is. So we know what the nerve agent is, we don't know what the transmission mechanism was, which is why the professor's advice is so pertinent, because actually we shouldn't be picking up anything uh, that we, do, we have no idea what it is. The counter-terrorism policing network is now leading the investigation, working with wheelchair police. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom. American barbecue lovers in Beijing will have to pay more for meat as trade dispute between U.S. and China escalates. Charlie Barredo tells us why. Beijing's American barbecue joint home plate is known for serving up trays of juicy pork ribs, often with a side of cornbread, but this key menu item is now in the firing line as China prepares to introduce a 25% import duty on the meat as of Friday. Charles de Pelé, the restaurant's general manager, says a price rise will definitely negatively impact the business. They will either have to raise their own prices or switch to domestically sourced meat. Well, I mean, realistically, if the price goes up, we have to raise our prices. So we, we're going to have to make a choice as to whether the customer is willing to pay that or we have to use domestic meat. Um, and unfortunately, I really can't answer that question. I hope that the prices don't go up because it's definitely going to affect our business. Um, and probably for the negative, at least taste-wise. The latest round of trade tariffs is a part of an escalating tit-for-tat trade dispute between the world's two top economies. 
China's threatened tariffs on $34 billion of U.S. goods will take effect from the beginning of the day on July 6. Washington has said it would implement tariffs on $34 billion of Chinese imports on July 6, and U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to escalate the trade conflict with tariffs on as much as $400 billion in Chinese goods if Beijing retaliates. Home Plate nestled in a trendy Beijing neighbor of San Litun and attracting both locals and foreigners, not only serves American pork but also American beef and bourbon, both of which are also on the list of U.S. goods China is expected to levy tariffs on. Charlie Barreto, UNTV News and Rescue. Rescuers will be mobilized to search for other possible access points to a cave where a group of 13 are trapped as obstacles continue to delay extraction plans. After finding the 12 boys and their seasoned soccer coach alive on Monday, attention turned to how to get the group back out through several kilometers of dangerously flooded tunnels. Authorities say rescuers would take 11 hours to do a round trip from cave's entrance to the group and back again, working against water currents inside the cave. Water is also still flooding and uh, the cave complex despite efforts to pump it out. The meteorological department also warns on Thursday that up to 60% of the country's north, including Chiang Rai, where the cave is located, can expect heavy rain from July 7 to July 12. And those are the latest news from around the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much. Amiel Pascual live from Zubei City, Taiwan. North and South Korea joined forces for their first basketball-friendly 15 years on Wednesday amid warming relations since the Winter Olympics in the South and easing tensions over the North's nuclear and missile program. Following female players' match, male players took to the court in two joint North-South teams, peace and prosperity in an indoor stadium in the North Korean capital of Pyongyang. According to a press pool in Pyongyang, the game ended in a 102-102 draw. North Korean leader and basketball fan Kim Jong-un was not spotted in the crowd on Wednesday, but the chairman of the North National Sports Guidance Committee, Cho Hui, who also visited South Korea for the Winter Olympics, was sitting next to the South Unification Minister, Cho Myung-gyon, cheering on the teams and clapping their hands. And those are the reasons behind the news July 5, 2018. On behalf of Angelo Castro III, I'm William Theo. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening.